director's meeting. It is May 20th, 2020, and we are in uh, at Zoom video conferencing. Mr. Howell? Kate Bricks? Here. Jenny Butler? Here. Jenny Cummings? Here. Marge Cavoni? Here. Pete Hensler? Here. Anna Keeney? Kate Levier? Here. Scott McLean? Here. Christina Small? Here. And Molly Cochran? Here. Will you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? And remember, mm -hmm. we're going to mute ourselves. Oh, wait a minute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That <laughs> <laughs> did you great, Scott, really. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> okay, Mr. Howell, are there any adjustments to the agenda? There is an adjustment to the agenda tonight, and it's um, on the board agenda under right. um, number board. number nine. Good job. Oh, shoot. I'm still not on mute. Sorry. <laughs> yes, Mr. Howell? <laughs> so I thought someone was cheering me on for an adjustment. <laughs> but it's under number, under number nine, and um, that the board will not be returning to regular session within that motion. So when the board goes in executive session, they will not return to regular session. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, it's now an opportunity for uh, public input which is uh, a time for the public to comment on items which are not in the agenda. I see people have uh, called in. Does anybody have anything that they'd like to speak about? I do not see that they do. Okay. Um, so uh, we will move right on to um, the public comment for Title I application, and that's Christine Hessler. Thank you, Jenny. Um, once a year, I come forward to the board to speak about our EF, EA grant application, um, which is affectionately known as our Title I funds, Title II, and our Title IV. Um, I'm gonna, Chris, is it possible for me to share my screen to go through this document for the public? I just made you a co-host. Okay, thank you. Um, let me just get this open. Okay. Um, as you see before you, and this is posted on our website, um, this is our intended uses of funds for all of the title um, grants that we have um, our preliminary allocations for. Um, so I'm going to take time to go through each of them to show you the difference between last year to this year. Um, on April 14th, we met as a Title I team um, with representatives from across the RSU um, to determine what the best use of these funds are. Um, so I'm going to walk through that piece and then at the end share how public can also comment on these funds and make suggestions. So for Title I, um, which is our supplemental instructional services, our preliminary allocation for FY21 is $366,920. This is a decrease of $49,415 this year. Um, our projects in this Title I section include homeless, um, supplemental instruction for literacy and supplemental instruction for mathematics. Um, these are the pieces where we provide Title I support. Um, we have a Title I teacher, Title I ed tech at our three elementary buildings to provide that instruction for students. Our Title II projects um, include $94,796 for the upcoming year. That's a decrease of $4,522. Um, in this project, we pay for the funds for the salary and benefits of one kindergarten teacher um, at the primary school. This helps us with a reduced class size at the kindergarten level. Um, and the remaining um, funds will be transferred into Title I in order to make up for the deficit in that title grant. Title IV. Is, is including student support and academic enrichment. Our preliminary allocation for next year is $42,266. 
Um, that is actually an increase of about $1,455 from last year. As the committee was meeting, um, in order to meet the needs of our students, again, in Title I, we will transfer the funds in order to make up for the cuts in the Title I allocation. Um, ESEA allows 100% of Title IV funds to be transferred to another Title grant. So based on our numbers of Title I students, our staff in Title I, um, the committee felt that the best place would be to transfer the, anything we have left over into Title I so that we can meet the salaries and benefits of our existing staff. Um, so if anyone has any questions or comments about these funds, um, they're welcome to ask now. You can also call or email me at the superintendent's office. Um, comments and suggestions will be taken until May 29th. After that point, um, I will start crafting the application um, that was just released uh, yesterday in order to secure those funds for the upcoming fiscal year. Does anyone have any questions regarding the public notice of the grant application? Seeing none. I guess we will move on. Does any, are we ready to, to move on with this? Okay. Thanks. Can I just add one thing, Janie? Yes. Um, just so that the, the board's aware, uh, Title I funding is uh, tied to federal poverty rate and also has a component of free and reduced within it. So um, that particular drop that you're seeing um, it's significant uh, that we're seeing that drop in, in, in Title I funds. I can remember when I started doing Title I, we were receiving in the neighborhood about $475,000 to support classrooms, and over time that that's dropped. Where this also becomes significant, and with something we just talked about in finance, is that the stimulus money that the district is receiving to the CARES Act was tied directly to Title I. And so as our Title I numbers decrease, as um, other places may see an increase, places have seen an increase are gonna see, see greater dollars through the CARES Act and if there are subsequent stimulus funds, whereas ours will continue to drop because our perceived rate of wealth um, for federal poverty has gone up. So um, this number, not only does it impact other budget things because we're having to make up for that shortfall, but it also can have an impact on future funding through stimulus or other CARES Act things that might happen. Thank you, Christine. Um, and now we'll move on to the curriculum committee discussion. Um, last week, we had two uh, inaugural meetings of the <laughs> curriculum committee. Um, and um, I want to tell you, from me personally, it was an absolutely fantastic experience. Um, mm -hmm. The things we learned, the things we heard, were, were just amazing. And it was all um, predicated on the, uh, no, on the wonderful job that Christine and Christine did on crafting a, a mechanism, a, a protocol that made it easy for people to bring their true feelings and, uh, and, and ways to look at um, challenges that were um, to, to make, to bring success to them and that was really terrific so i want to thank specifically thank christine and christine uh for such a great job um what they crafted was that each person was asked um and it represented k to 12 and and um, um adult ed as well um what were in distance learning and this is the protocol that we'll be using for all i think um, um discussions of the, the curriculum and assessment and instruction. Uh, first was, what are the challenges? I mean, first, what are your successes about this experience? What, what were the challenges? What were the resources that you used? What resources did you need? And, um, and the rich discussion was, was really terrific. Uh, Chris was just going to show his face in there for a minute and he ended up staying for the whole experience because it was so um, it was so good and Chris even um, used up an entire uh, notebook writing notes 
so so that was great so now i and and Kate and I talked about it afterwards. Uh, we were just gobsmacked about the, uh, the, the really good work that the things, the good things that we heard and the good things that, that came out of it. So without much more ado, I'll pass it on to Christine to, and Christine to share. Thank you, Jenny, for those kind words. Um, I, I have to say this was a wonderful experience and, and for the board and for the community to hear tonight, um, I've kind of done the slides out to just share with you the process so you could understand it and then try to encapsulate the work that was done over the two days. And I encourage Jenny and Kate, Chris and Christine to please jump in and share your thoughts as well. Um, I'll jump to share our screen. Um, and also if the board would like this presentation, um, I can share that out as well. Um, so this was our very first curriculum committee meeting um, and it was distance learning K to adults. Um, the curriculum committee was launched just before closure with much excitement and a wonderful <laughs> video if you remember. Um, I was pleased with the number of emails I received from staff who thought this is a really great idea. I'm, I'm excited to have this committee going. And so it, it really made sense for us to, for our first topic to be distance learning um, because again we would like this committee to reflect the ability of what is actually going on in the teaching and learning aspect of RSU 14. And so because of the number of people we reached out to, uh, we had to actually have this over two days. Um, it, it, I have been fortunate or unfortunate to, been on, to be on a seven hour Zoom call at times and we didn't really wanna do that. It's not a lot of fun. So um, we wanted to hear from people in all of these different aspects. So May 12th, we heard from K2 teachers, grades three, five, six, eight, our tech integrators, and we also surveyed the A team. On May 13th, we, we heard from teachers in the high school, the Katahdin program, special education teachers. This also included occupational therapists, um, speech therapists, our ed techs, and um, adult education. Why can I not go forward? Oh, here we go. So the goals and the outcome of this meeting were to provide the RSU 14 school board with an update on distance learning. Um, we also wanted to hear from our educators um, on the impact of distance learning in RSU 14 due to COVID-19 and share the positive aspects of distance learning identify some of the barriers and identify the tools and resource, resources needed to enhance distance learning. Okay, I am struggling with turning in this mode. So as Jenny alluded to before, the staff prompts um, were, we asked teachers to come to the meeting with these four things in mind. What has gone well? What tools and resources have assisted you in this closure? What are some barriers that you faced? And what are some tools and resources you would need in the future for distance learning? So if you think of all of the worlds that we are talking about, um, Christine Bertinade was a co-pilot who helped to encapsulate all of the themes from these presentations. So these were the strong things we heard over and over again. And this helps us organize our work moving forward. So the first theme that, that came out was autonomy, voice and choice that teachers had, and I'll speak to each of these in detail as we go through. Um, SEL needs, social emotional learning needs and next steps for students, staff, family, and community. Um, technology, professional development, resources, support came up. The theme of collaboration and teamwork was very strong. Um, consistent academic and online classroom expectations, instruction and assessment. Was, was thorough through our two days. Students, uh, teachers talked about engagement, the fun, high interest activities to maintain investment in learning, and then equity and access. So those are the ones we're gonna break apart a little bit. And what I did was go back to all of the notes and kind of share some examples of each of these themes that we saw over those two days. So the first one is autonomy, um, your voice and choice. Um, very strongly, teachers having the opportunity to present material in a different way. The importance of collaboration and sharing resources with colleagues. Um, the main Department of Education webinars 
um, and put new learning in place, tools or lessons. So teachers would learn things, share with colleagues, and they were able to put them into place into their own instruction. Um, they also talked about the technology department supporting them. If they wanted to try something new, if they needed a new platform, the constant support that they received. Also had online resources for teaching. Um, we were able to find some things and put some things in motion to help with this closure. And to shift the instruction based on student and family needs. So they were able to make some shifts based on their grade level, based on the needs of their families. Um, and this approach has really brought out the staff creativity. Some staff were doing themes for the week to get kids excited about distance learning as we were into week nine of this. Um, and then another important piece, and I know Chris has talked a little bit about this, is the asynchronous class meeting. Um, some families, some classrooms, it was, it was, they would get more students if they had an evening meeting, especially our littles where parents needed to be with them in, in order to sign on. So these are some of the things that were captured as examples of that theme of autonomy. Next are the SEL needs and next steps. Um, the hard thing with our staff is trying to engage in all students. That came out loud and clear. Um, expressing concerns around students who are historically disengaged and struggling academically. Um, what will the supports be when we return in the fall? Um, how do we support families with social emotional needs? And how do we support children when we are not face-to-face? -face? Um, they notice that parents are feeling really stressed out um, and working on maintaining and enhancing relationships and supporting children socially and emotionally. So also they notice and stress that families have struggled to work, engage all children, and managing both is really hard. They are grateful for the book bus and food distri distribution in Wyndham and Raymond. So again, if you think of the four prompts we were asking staff, you're getting what's going well, what are some of our barriers, what are some of the things people are struggling with, and so we tried to organize them under these themes. So next is the other big theme was technology, PD, resource, and support. Uh, these are some quotes. I don't know what I would have done, how I would have done this without Seesaw, uh, especially in the elementary level. It's a platform that allows students to take pictures and parents to take pictures of what students are learning and communicate pretty much right, like a little app right on their phone for constant communication. Um, Google Classroom, Google Meet and Zoom have been high powered tools that are being used from K to 12 um, to reach students. Um, the fact that we have devices in the hands of staff and students. Um, tech integrators are our heroes. Uh, Richie and Tammy have been absolutely instrumental in working with staff, providing step-by-step -step directions, videos, follow-ups. Um, they have truly been on the forefront of this. In fact, um, a few sessions at the DOE have been hosted. Uh, Tammy did some really nice work sharing with other educators across the state um, how some of the, the pieces that Wyndham High School is using um, and all the directions on how to do that. She actually did a two-part series, which was really nice. Um, they emphasize the support of teachers, administrators, and the school board through their thoughts. Um, the gratitude mentioned many times for the change in Wednesday. Um, it allowed staff to plan, to meet, um, to engage in professional development. Having that day, which wasn't new learning, was, was really helpful as they were also trying to manage balancing their own family and their work family. Um, resources have been easy to access. The daily emails of PD um, and on the RSU 14 closure site, people were very, felt very supported by having those as backups and activities that students could engage in. And then they also appreciated the problem solving with buildings and central office administrators. Um, as things come up, things that keep changing. If you remember, we thought we were gonna be out for two weeks and then we were shut down and how do we do this? And, how do we close schools? And we're constantly doing those pieces right now. And staff really recognize um, those parts. So another big emerging theme was the collaboration and teamwork. Um, PLC and staff meetings have been very helpful, sharing ideas and resources at each building. Specialists have relied on one another to learn about ways of engaging children to use technology. Um, they expressed immense gratitude for the time specialists have been given to collaborate. As a quote, we have never been given more time, to, we have never been more connected than ever. 
Um, I have to say our K to five specialists were not user friendly with technology and they are the group I feel that has just gone leaps and bounds and making videos and activities for students and they're just flying and they are super excited about the learning that has happened. The collaboration, I'm sorry, the DOE webinars have been awesome. Um, they've been developing connections across the state with other educators. Um, more can, um, oops, sorry, I missed one. I'm gonna go back. Oh, I gotta go back one more, sorry. Um, educational technicians have been providing support to students. Um, they're working with their classroom teachers in some cases, meeting with students on different times to assure and to use some of those instructional strategies. Uh, the network of teachers has been helpful and people have been sharing lessons. Um, so all kinds of examples of collaboration and teamwork across the RSU and even outside of the RSU. So the next theme that came out is consistent academic and online classroom expectations. Um, it's difficult to monitor student progress in this closure. Um, and assessing student progress at the elementary level is especially difficult. Um, it will be important to model appropriate distance learning behaviors for students um, if this is to continue, like some SOPs for distance learning. Um, modeling, uh, monitoring individual learner progress has been a challenge with limited resources at home. Books, supplies, level readers, example, uh, for et cetera, has been, has been put out there and, and was remarked upon. And then how do we find a balance with screen time was another theme that emerged. They're also looking for consistent assessment practices and consistent expectations by grade levels and schools. And recognize that assessing online is not very effective um, with many resource, without many resources in place. Traditional tests are difficult and this requires more creative summative assessment approaches. And again, they recognize that the end of the year is very different than the beginning of the year. And so we also have brainstormed tools and suggestions that they have for us if we have to move forward with this. And then engagement was another piece they spoke about regularly. Um, Zoom and Google Meets were initially a good way for students to connect. And this is from a high school teacher. Um, students have grown less interested in virtual meetings and found it important to make smaller groups. This was a great suggestion. This teacher found that his, this has increased interaction and engagement levels. So he does sessions for six to 10 kids um, and it's working. The kids are coming in and they're much more attentive and they're getting more done in a shorter amount of time. Um, cooking has been an important part of the Cantadin program and it's working well. Um, they shared how they were able to get food to all of their kids and they did an online cooking piece and they were able to have a meal with their families and talk about that connection of preparing meals together, which was a really nice connection for those kids. Um, the importance of team meetings, class meetings, the middle school especially, uh, kids were looking forward to being with their whole team and sharing something and the teachers are being really creative about what they're doing that day or, the, or posing a great question for kids to interact with. It also has um, provided the spotlight of balance, the technology with offline exercises is essential. How do we do this so kids are not sitting on the screen all day long? They're recognizing it's not healthy for any of us to be doing that. But this has also been an opportunity for teachers to think outside the box. Authors, climate scientists, and others have joined sessions um, which has supported learner engagement. So teachers are really trying to bring in some people to their meetings um, to surprise the kids, work with the kids, ask them deeper questions. And then some fun activities. One teacher mentioned her kids absolutely love Harry Potter. So doing some read alouds and science experiments, um, posting daily riddles, um, et cetera, funny things have supported um, student engagement. And finally, um, Connections with students prior to closure was so helpful. I can't even express the amount um, of teachers that shared with us that thank goodness we knew our students. Because if we don't know our students, how do we connect with them if they're struggling? And many teachers said, I know my kids, so I would privately email them or follow up with a phone call and find out why they weren't joining us and they were able to nudge them a little bit more, which was really helpful. So equity and access, 
um, with our, one of our last themes, and that is support for teachers who struggle with technology, a help desk for staff they're looking forward to if, if we need to do this further. And they also wanted to make sure that all staff have internet access um, as we're looking at for how do we provide equity and access for everybody. Um, they also wanna make sure that we have social emotional support in place for families. Um, and that another concern is many of the online resources have been for free during closure. Um, but the district may need to consider purchasing some of the tools moving forward if we need to extend this closure. The other thing they're looking for is some consistency in terms of ther uh, therapeutic approaches, our speech, our OT, what data do they collect? Um, those pieces they're being very thoughtful of. Um, more PD is needed around Google Classroom, especially for our educational technicians. And adult ed um, recognize that they need more access to technology for all students, including web, web cameras, microphones, Zoom lights needed um, for them to continue to do the work with the adults in our community. Um, we also wanna recognize that there's been a tremendous amount of work for special education staff, the IEP meetings and special education paperwork to be in compliance with federal guidelines. Um, one day there's 12 IEP meetings um, and we need to provide more support to our special education ed educators. So the valuable information um, that take away from this piece is this committee provided incredible insight to guide our next steps in planning. They need continued autonomy for teachers. Um, we need increased building access to get the tools we need in order to help students. Um, offline learning resources to support families, um, clear expectations of what services and documentation should look like. Those are our outsider providers. Continued use of video conferencing, Google Classroom, continued support from our tech integrators, collaboration with colleagues moving forward, time to plan, and then continued professional development, including you know, making um, some screen videos to explain new things, um, provide learning pathways and provide reminders and updates to help streamline this process for our students. Um, these were things that people had suggestions because they are the ones that are helping us decide what are the pieces that we need. So in the forefront, um, I think this was probably one of the things that was so powerful um, in our pieces. So how do we make a personal contact with children if distance learning continues in the fall? And how do students get to know us and how do we get to know them, their style of learning, their strengths, their challenges? How do we put non-screen tasks in front of our students and how do we provide a sense of normalcy for students? Um, so these are the things as we're trying to plan for the fall or if we have to close at another point in time, things we need to consider as we move um, through this process. So I know that I picked you with a lot, so I would be more than open to any questions from the group. And I encourage Christine and Kate, Danny and Chris um, to ask any questions. Um, I felt the protocol we used and the, the pieces worked really well. Um, the feedback I received from the people who did attend the meeting, we asked them to do some debriefing. Um, they felt heard, they felt it was valuable information. Um, they felt like it was a, a, an opportunity to share and offer suggestions without hurting anyone's feelings, which I think is really important. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing this process with other topics as we move through to bring these pieces um, to the school board and to the community. Anybody have any questions or comments? I, I wrote down one of the things that the, someone said on the very first day, and that was, thank goodness for the technology that you have in, had in place. Um, uh, it has paid off, that, what is it? That has paid off tremendously, um, immensely. So I, so kudos to everyone for doing that. Um, for the support that we've had for technology. And uh, yeah, I, 
we had lots of ideas um, and that we will we'll continue to talk about them, but this was just a, our first go around. Um, I'd, I'd like to personally thank uh, Christine uh, for capturing all of that stuff and uh, because that was, that was very good. Kate, do you have anything you want to add to it? I, I thought it, I thought what Christine did showed us all was really terrific. And, and I, I was looking back at all my notes and you, everything was there. So thanks. Um, Marge has raised her hand. Oh, there you are, Marge. Yeah. I, I only wanted to say, I mean, that's a lot. I mean, I am like so impressed that um, you were able, I mean, that's soup to nuts. I mean, you just covered, I mean, everybody was in there, staff, parents, students, I mean, everybody. That, that is big. I think you did a a super job. I mean, I can't wait till it continues. I mean, this is one. I think it's wonderful. That's all. That's all I can say. I think it's wonderful. Thank, Thank you, Marge. I'm hoping distance learning isn't continuing much longer. Oh, but God. Yeah. If if we need to, I think um, I I could have gone on for hours. Um, people reached out, and we have some staff that have, that teach distance learning um, at different levels and have offered some really great suggestions if we need to start the year this way. Um, and we will be very thoughtful in our planning and guidance and continue to put support in place for our staff um, in order to serve the needs of our students. But, you know, I think the, the piece that struck me is um, the connection to our kids, our, our staff are, are deeply missing their students. And they're very concerned of the ones they haven't been able to connect with. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they want to do whatever we do, they want to do better. And um, I, I was just so impressed with their thoughtfulness in this process and the thoughtfulness of being um, very helpful in planning and suggesting things that we might not have thought of um, without their input. And I think it's really important that we get their input. Um, as we move forward and have to make some decisions about what the rest of this is going to look like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, and thank you very much, Christine. That was, that was really good. Um, just given some of the work that I do, um, I've seen what other districts have and, and have not done. Um, so I do commend um, all of you and the team for the work that you've done for this. The one thing, just because you you mentioned it, and it was one of the things that like popped up the most to me when I was looking at your presentation was was the whole thing around relationships. Mm -hmm. And should we have to start the school year like we are right now? I just worry so much about the kids going on. I, again, I also, I have a second grader, so I'm thinking of her going on to third grade and have and not really knowing those instructors and, and those teachers. And I, that, you know, that's something I'm sure that you're thinking of. Um, but just because you said relationships again, I was like, I've, I've got to say it, I'm going to say it. So that, that's something I hope that everyone just keeps in mind as we are looking at what September looks like, because that's, that's a huge part of connecting with kids. We're going to have to be really, cre really creative, Kate, really yeah. creative in making sure we, we've established some connections. Um, I don't know what that looks like. We, we always have to wait for guidance, but we'll figure it out. I, you know, we're doing 30 hours of graduation ceremonies. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll do it, what we need to do to do that for kids. Yeah. Great job, though. That was really good. And, and I just, Kate, if I can... Scott, um, just kind of jump in here for a second, which you're absolutely right. And I think one of the best things that I've heard or another superintendent saying is that disclosure is 75% relationships and making sure that we're maintaining those relationships o over the long term with students so that um, they feel that sense of connection. I think the other thing I heard after listening and um, hearing from our staff is that I think people forget about it, but much like members of the community are working from home and juggling kids. Our staff are also working from home and juggling kids. Mm -hmm. And families are juggling some um, crazy schedules right now and that, that we really have to come up with programming and support that can support families at all times of the day. And you know, we had staff members talking about getting emails from parents at two o'clock in the morning because that was the time that that parent could process and actually uh, connect with that teacher and just, 
I think that's another thing we just got to keep in mind is that, um, you know, our staff are juggling families and kids and all those other things and, and maintaining. Um, at the beginning of all this, there was uh, relief provided by the federal government where anybody who could do child care or had a child care requirement could just go out on an FMLA leave if they had sick time. And no one in RSU 14 has done that. Um, they have gone ahead and they have juggled all of these responsibilities uh, while still meeting the needs of their students. So um, they've been working hard to do that. Uh, Scott? So <clears throat> I just wanted to say that I, I think that um, this whole, this whole process has been hard. Everybody has been learning a lot about how to incorporate something like this. And I, I just want to point out the, um, uh, the positive in it. Um, and that is that, uh, there's been, there's been a lot of learning with, um, not only our, our students, but also our, uh, teachers on how to use the technology to that, that's been provided. Um, I'm going to go ahead and eat a little bit of crow right now and say that I'm really happy that all of you have disagreed with my position on technology <laughs> over the years. Um, um. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm very happy with how the technology is being utilized and, and what we are doing. And I think that uh, we're going to be able to learn from this and we're going to be able to incorporate uh, some of this technology uh, moving forward. It's definitely not ideal. Um, it's definitely not a replacement for in-school instruction, but I think that um, incorporating some of this, um, you know, virtual meetings and Google Classroom in regular everyday instruction is going to go a long way. So um, thank you very much, Christine, for putting that together. Thank you, uh, Janie and Kate and Chris for um, forming this committee and giving us some good information. I appreciate it. Good. Um, I won't make you eat crow, uh, Scott, but I, two things I wanted to mention. One is that I've heard from um, some parents about this process. And uh, one suggestion that was made, which I found to be terrific, and then I mentioned it to Christine and she said, oh yeah, we're, we're already pursuing that. And that was around uh, education for parents on how to use seesaw how to use these uh, mm -hmm. programs so um i think that's a, a a part that's missing um and um there were some other suggestions that have been given that we will we will take in and incorporate um but um but that was one that i thought was particularly terrific the other one uh is right up pete's alley and that is that one of um the young men that comes in um uh, mows and helps me plant flowers and works with me said hey does this mean that we won't have to have snow days next year that we, you know that we can do this he said that would be really cool then we could get out earlier and I thought I'm so glad I'm not teaching now um, because I like snow days but anyway so I'm just I just wanted to say those two things Thanks very much. Did anybody, I don't know if we can open it to people if they would like to comment. Um, that, I, have, oh, I have one, wait. sorry. Yes. You, know, you didn't call me, but I didn't know if you saw me before you I opened did. it. I did just have one thing I, I wanted to add just because you said, you mentioned hearing suggestions. And again, if we have to start the year out like this, which man, of course we all really, really hope that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, and my perspective is from the younger grades, but if there is a way to work collaboration in a little bit more with them. So, I mean, the morning meetings are, are wonderful for them to have those connections, but then they, they have that morning meeting and then they're, they, they're doing assignments on their own. Um, so I don't know if there is, okay, it looks like you're already thinking that. I think that would just be amazing. Um, you know, truth be told, I'm extremely lucky where I live. Um, we have other um, second graders here and our neighborhood has pretty much collectively chosen to quarantine together um, just for the sake of our, our children's mental health. Um, but so they have done a little bit of collaboration on some stuff, mm -hmm. but 
um, it, if, it, if you know, that it makes a huge difference with motivation and stuff. So I, I hope that there's a way to incorporate that. And, and that is um, an important piece, Kate, like you said there, we, we didn't push any other tools, but you know, there are breakout rooms in Zoom. And so some teachers are playing with that where they're having a few kids and the teacher and doing some things together. And so it's a smaller, it's a smaller chance to work with students and collaborate because it's not 20 voices on the screen. It's maybe three or four voices on the screen and feel that connection, Kate, because that, you know, I, I have a junior, I have a sophomore and an eighth grader, and uh, some of their highlights are those little small sessions uh, connecting and working on something. Mm -hmm. um, and so again, those are things like that your brain starts thinking of of how do we how do we do some of these things? How do we do some of the parts in math where we need to have some discourse? Well, we can do that in a smaller group, and our, our role is to work with our math coaches and to provide instructions on how to do that and help them with that piece. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Because don't make me teach how to borrow tens now. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> there were some tears in our house for that one, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I don't know how to tell if anybody wants to talk. And I know. Um, oh, 8022. Do you want to talk? Did you tell us who you are? Hi, Danny. This is Lisa Garno. No, you. I somehow I got unmuted. I was just listening. So um, Christine's done a great job, and I appreciate all your support. So no, I was just listening. Okay. Thank you. Uh, anyone else? Want to? Hi. This is Caitlin Lacase. Um, since you've given us the opportunity, thank you all so much for the work you have done. Uh, I 100% agree with what Kate just said, that some collaboration and small groups would be especially beneficial. I have a first grader, um, and I, you know, it's my personal experience, but he cannot engage. He, he, it is hard for him to engage with the whole big classroom. We've had great success with, you know, we do Zoom calls with one-on-one -on -one friends, and they play board games via Zoom, or they play Sleeping Queens, which is actually, you know, doing math at the same time. Um, and that has been really helpful. And I know I got a text from another parent before this um, with essentially the same suggestion that, you know, if it's digital, can the actual classrooms be meeting in different groups fewer times a week or different times during the day um, for more, for more intimate um, lessons online. So, but you guys are doing a great job. So thank you. Great, great suggestion, Caitlin. Thank you. Okay, um, thanks again, Christine, for both presentations. Um, they were, as usual, stellar. I appreciate it, thanks. Thank you, Jenny. All right, um, we'll now move on to this, the superintendent's report. So a, a couple things, and this is probably a good follow-up to the report that you just received. Um, we are doing a tremendous amount of planning and um, my brain has moved beyond um, much like Christine, Christine and Lisa. Uh, we've moved beyond closing out this year and are just working through multiple scenarios for how do we open up next year. Uh, and really the scenarios are three and three plus which is one that we open school as we normally have open school and we put in supports for seeing where kids are at and looking to fill some gaps, providing some social emotional support. And we look to get kids into as, as a normal routine as possible. Um, we also have the possibility that um, state officials will say that it's not safe to open. CDC said it's not safe. And we have to start the year in a transition to a distance learning model. Uh, and then, so think about green is go, red is we're back into this environment, and then there's this yellow. And right now there are multiple, multiple, multiple shades of yellow of different models that are floating out there for ways that you can bring partial classrooms in for half days, full days, alternating days, um, bringing in kids for multiple days and then having them out for multiple days. Uh, all sorts of models that are floating out there as possibilities and um, you know we've started to work as a group to kind of weigh through those 
Um, just also something I want to share working with Cumberland County superintendents, which it's I, actually I think it's the closest the group has ever worked. Uh, but now we're working on this as a county. Um, what are the possible instructional models? Because honestly, and as the call I was on today, it's that level of frustration and unknown that we're all feeling, which is that um, what's the best model? And more specifically, what are going to be our parameters, call them guardrails, of safety things that we would have to have in place and um, for whatever model of instruction. So it is number one on our mind. I think honestly, it's the thing I go to bed thinking about and it's the thing that I wake up thinking about first thing is how do we go ahead and, and move ourselves back into that model. Uh, so we're doing a tremendous amount of planning for the fall. Uh, one thing that I really would like to bring up with the board right now which we've not had a chance to discuss is that right now when you voted on having June 11th be the last day for um, students and that June 18th would be the last member, uh, last day for our staff. Um, what I would like to do is work with our associations and actually take those last two staff days and move them to two days prior to the start of school. So instead of our traditional one day opening, um, which I don't see any way in which we're gonna be able to do a district wide opening with everybody in the auditorium celebrating all the different awards and getting buildings together, but to give us then three days of start time, um, which could be professional development on if we are in a partial open, to what are the policies, procedures, and other things we need to put into place. If we're in an extended closure, um, looking at additional resources and professional development, uh, but giving us some additional time. And, and one day is not enough. There's, there's no fiscal impact because in essence, you will be taking funds that you've committed this year and you'll be banking those days into next year, again, to give us that extended professional development. Um, one professional day to start the school year is far from adequate uh, in order to be able to get this district back up and running um, at, that, at that year. So um, I do believe that it would require an official vote by the board because you're changing the calendar for staff and you're reallocating funds. But um, in thinking about how do we open the year, um, it's something that I would really like to pursue so that we can have a better start for our staff and ultimately then for our students. So uh, before I go through a couple other things, just wanted to get some board feedback. What are your thoughts on that? And um, is it a direction that you're okay with me heading in? You want a head nod or a thumbs up or? I think a thumbs up would be great. I'm okay with it. Okay. Okay. okay, then I will continue heading in that direction because, um, you know, as we work through all different scenarios and possibilities with transportation and class sizes and um, how we allocate and segregate our buildings, um, we can do all this planning, but unless our staff understands it, there's no way we're going to be able to have a successful right. open. So um, I will continue off in that. Um, we just wanted to give a shout out of congratulations to Alex Adams who is a music teacher, um, is split between Manchester and Jordan Small Middle School, but was selected as the main Music Educators Association New Educator of the Year. Wonderful. Um, Alex, if you've ever had a chance to meet with him, uh, a tremendous amount of energy, a passion for music. And what I love about his classes is that provides multiple opportunities for kids to try different instruments and different styles and really generates a love for music. So he's a great example of um, the creativity that we want to see in our staff, uh, but it was great that he had that honor. Um, also want to give a thank you to the Wyndham High School staff and school administrators. Uh, Christine, Christine and I had a chance to just uh, scoot over today and see the drive up cap and gown distribution for our seniors. Um, and there was probably a dozen staff members who were there greeting kids, doing caps and gowns. Uh, but I think they've done a fantastic job under some difficult circumstances and some difficult parameters to plan a class celebration and then also to honor families with individual diploma ceremonies. And when Christine said 30 hours, 
it's probably going to be 30 hours of time to have kids with families come through the auditorium and have their name read and receive their diplomas, which um, as a living in a district where, where I will not experience that for my own student, uh, I think it's a wonderful plan and I think they've just done an outstanding job kind of working through this all the way from the start um, and working with kids and families as to what's going to actually work. So uh, a lot of moving parts. We hope to have some draft plans, uh, initial thinking to the board in June as far as the fall, uh, but you know, a lot of this is just going to continue to evolve over time as we learn more, as we learn more about our parameters. Um, we've been told we'll have some guidance from the Department of Education by the end of the month, but given that it's a committee of 42 people who are working on this right now, um, I would guess that's probably going to be June, late June, before we see some things coming out of that. So um, we're going to continue on our own, knowing our system and our kids and our teachers and try to plan what's best. But what we want is what are those parameters that are going to be so that we either know we can open safely or that we need to go to a different model. But just I want the public to know and I want the board to know it is the one thing that I think we talk about the most in this office is how do we do this and how do we do it well. Thanks, Chris. Um, it's, I will now take um, a motion to go into executive session. Uh, I nominate Christina. Do you want to do it? Okay. My own. Okay. Uh, I move to approve going into executive session to discuss district office executive administrator contracts for ensuing contract years pursuant to 1MRSA subsection 4056A and not return to regular meeting. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Jenny Cummings? Yeah, aye. Kate Bricks? Aye. Marge Gavoni? Yes. Jenny Butler? Yes. Christina Small? Yes. Kate Levier? Yes. Scott McLean? Yes. Pete Hensler? Aye. Bye, Molly. Thank you, Christine. All right, so I'm going to end this recording and we'll go over to the executive session.